Pulleys and gears is a unit within the understanding structures and mechanism strand of grade four. And in this video, we're going to talk about how different pulley systems are used to lift loads from one place to another. We're going to talk about gear systems and how they're used to change the speed and direction of movement. We're going to suggest some activities that you can use in your class to design and build different pulleys and gear systems. And we're also going to pose some questions that you can use to uh, help introduce these ideas to your students, allow them to gain a stronger understanding of these concepts and how they connect with the world around them. Before we jump into pulleys and gears, we're going to want to create a tool that measures force. Now in the classroom, that's called a spring scale or a force meter, and that measures how many newtons uh, of force it takes to lift a particular load. Now, we might not all have access to a spring scale or a force meter in our classroom, so we're going to make our very own using material that we find around the class and at home. The first thing you're going to need is a wooden dowel or a piece of wood that's roughly 20 to 30 centimeters in length and two elastics that are the same size. You're going to crisscross those over each other here at the top using a thumbtack here. You're going to push that through the top holding it all together. Next, you're going to use a paper clip and shape that into a hook and tape that to the very top of your dowel like this. Now that I've taped it on the top here, I've left enough room for the elastics to come out of either side. Now we're going to create a sleeve here that's going to tell us what force we're looking at. I've used the top of a margarine container here, a plastic top, and I've cut out a rectangular piece that's going to be a cylinder here for my sleeve. And I'm going to put that into that cylinder shape, I'm going to tape it together, and once I've done this, I'm going to create two little slits on either side, and that's going to hold my elastics onto my force meter here. So when I put my elastic over top, you see it'll catch over that little slit. Now, once I do that, and I uh, put that, uh, that sleeve over the top of my wooden dowel, I'm going to secure it with a piece of tape so that the elastics stay firm. Now it's time to calibrate it with my marker. I'm going to mark how many newtons force it takes to lift up some weights here. Now, the conversion is about 101 gram force per newton. So that's like lifting up the force that it takes to lift up 100 grams and that's going to equate roughly to one newton on my scale. So if I go up in 100 gram intervals all the way up to maybe 500, you'll see it should equate to 500 on my scale. When introducing pulleys to your students, you want to ask them what they already know about pulleys and how they work as well as examples of pulleys at use around them. You could do this in small groups and they could tally a list of all their examples or in a whole class discussion where you can brainstorm these ideas, keep track of them, and also keep track of them as the unit progresses because those ideas will shift as you go along. Now, an example of pulleys at work in your classroom might be uh, in the system of curtains or blinds that you might have over your window. You might also have a flagpole at your school uh, that likely uses a pulley to pull up the flag as well. Uh, in the neighborhood, you might uh, point out a crane or something, a clothesline, talk about elevators in a tall building. These are likely pulley systems that students may have encountered. When exploring single fixed pulley systems with your students, a good demonstration is to use a broom handle. You can set that atop of some chairs or over the edge of your desk. Now using some string, you can lift a mass or an object here quite effectively, and this is a good demonstration of a single fixed pulley. Now on a larger scale, you could go outside and use the horizontal bar on a goalie net if you have that in your field. Using a rope and a bucket filled with some sand or books, you toss the rope over and have your students experiment pulling that pail all the way up to the bar. And they can compare the force of lifting it with their hand or pulling it up with the rope. Now on a smaller scale in the classroom, you could have your students uh, use some string, uh, an object, and some pencils off the side of their desk. Maybe put some books on the other side to weight it down. And challenge them to lift an object from the floor to their desk without touching it. And you could also ask them how they would balance 
their object midway. How would they do that? Also, uh, this is a good example of uh, a pulley system lifting a load vertically, but it can also do it horizontally. You can brainstorm that with your students and ask them to figure out how to move an object from one place on their desk to another using a pulley system. Now, alternatives that are a little bit more realistic is if you can get a hold of some spools and use that over top of a pencil or a marker, or maybe you have access to a pulley kit that will help you out as well. Now when we look at multiple pulley systems, we'll have to be a little bit more creative. Now it's time to take a look at some compound pulleys, also called block and tackle, and how that makes it easier to lift a particular load and to decrease that force, creating a mechanical advantage. Two broom sticks or some hockey sticks are a good use here. And you want to present this to the, your classroom at the front here. Ask for some eager volunteers to hold these two broomsticks about 30 centimeters apart. You can do this vertically like this or horizontally works as well. And at all costs, remember 30 centimeters apart. And then you can have two other volunteers come up and try to push them together. And after five seconds of battling that out, you can discuss how hard it was, how challenging it was to do that, to push them together. And then after, you can challenge them to figure out a way of using a rope to facilitate that process of moving these two broomsticks together. So have your students come and try their ideas at the front of the class or maybe in small groups. Good experimentation. And then you want to guide them to the idea of tying it to one broom and then wrapping it around both brooms a few times, which is simulating a compound pulley. And then they can retry this, have your two students hold them apart, one student pull the rope through, and ask them then how easy it was to do that. Was it simpler? How is it different than not using a rope whatsoever? This is a good example of compound pulleys. Now that your students are familiar with single fixed and compound pulley systems, it's time to compare these different systems with respect to how much force we need to lift a particular load. This is a good activity to use as a demonstration or within different centers where students can explore and experiment independently or maybe in small groups. First, you want to have them write down some estimates as to how much force will be needed. You can use a sheet similar as this where they can write down and record uh, how many pulleys are in a system, how much weight is being lifted, and their estimate. Now we can test their predictions using a spring scale or a force meter, maybe even one they've made themselves, and see if they're right. So I'm lifting 200 grams here, I notice it's about 2 newtons. And we can try a compound system with a fixed pulley and a movable pulley and see what happens then. We'll notice that it's only a newton force needed to lift that particular load, which is the same amount from our single system. So that's a mechanical advantage of two. We've cut down that effort by two. You want to ask them if there's a pattern they see as to how much string, the distance and string that they have to pull in order to get it up to the same height. They'll notice that's also doubled as well. Now mechanical advantage of three, we have three strings pulling up our weight, and then also four. Now that's not necessarily a linear relationship when you graph that with your students. And that's a relationship that's a little bit more curved because of the friction and the weight of the pulleys that are pulling down. If you don't have pulleys like these in your classroom or available at your school or school board resource center, you can easily make your own using materials around the classroom. These ones here are made out of paper clips and some twine or fishing line, and they work quite well for compound pulleys. Now, in the uh, line that you're pulling towards yourself, you can put a loop in it, and that's where you can connect your spring scale or your force meter. Another crude way of building one is to bend a coat hanger in two, and that hook at the bottom is pretty useful when picking up uh, whatever it is that you are lifting. Now, you might contend with a little bit more friction in these models, but they work pretty well. Thank you.